Hello everyone and welcome to the Discovery Days panel session, Unearthing New Mineral Deposits with Big Data, Explore SA, the Gula Challenge. My name is Christy and I'm from the Geological Survey of South Australia and I'm going to be your moderator for this session today. So firstly, I'd like to introduce the panel who will be joining us today. We have Holly Bridgewater, industry lead from Unearthed and Stefan Thiel, principal geophysicist from the Geological Survey of South Australia. Welcome to you both. Thanks, and Holly, <laughs> Holly, I thought we'd start the session today by you providing a bit of an overview of the challenge and some background on who participated. Yeah, thanks, Christy. That sounds like a great place to start. So um, Explorers say the Gawler Challenge is the largest ever open data uh, online challenge ever run by a government organisation. And um, so the challenge was run from March to July 2020 um, with a $250,000 prize pool. And the challenge was for, to, for people all over the world to come and look through the extensive amount of data that's available in South Australia, particularly in the Gawler Craton, uh, to see if participants could come up with new ideas for locations for potential economic mineralisation and new targets um, for any range of commodities within the Gawler Craton. So um, the challenge ran uh, for five months. We had well over 2,000 participants from over 90 countries take part so it really was a very global challenge and um, just a bit of a plug you can go on uh, the government website the department website and see where all of those teams are from on a map and click on and um, look at their reports and their their submissions so over the, those five months all those those teams worked around the world and um, developing uh, a number of different targets and maps around prospectivity from all of that data that was available um, and so we saw, as I said, over 2,000 people participate. Um, the main kind of disciplines of the participants was really across data science and geology. And when we look at the top teams and the most successful teams, certainly those teams that combine those two disciplines really effectively were the most successful. So bringing together those two domains really well, definitely I think is a recipe for success in this kind of challenge. Uh, and I'm really encouraged to see um, you know, how well a lot of the teams did that and how we're kind of bringing that kind of um, diversity together now across the industry more generally as well. Um, so, yeah, I think in terms of participation, another thing to kind of um, look to is that a lot of the teams that, you know, took part in the challenge are still sticking around in the industry. They're looking forward to phase two and getting involved in that. Um, but also it's helped to bring in a lot of these, a lot of data scientists and geologists from different industries to um, to the mineral sector, uh, which is really exciting to see a lot of a lot of people really engage with the problems that we're having and and be motivated to solve them. Yeah, that's great, Holly. Thanks, um, Stefan. Now a bit of a question for you, Stefan. The challenge gained immense interest from around the world, as Holly has just commented on. What do you think has been the benefits for South Australia so far in running the challenge? Yeah, no, it's a good point. And I just want to pick up on the last thing that Holly really said. Um, just the, the benefit really is just to attract the data scientists in the first place um, to the state is extremely important um, for our department and for South Australia in general. I mean, it really started with the Os Minerals Challenge the year before the Gola Challenge that we ran this year. And, you know, we see even the standard in the entries um, improve. So I think that's a real benefit for the um, uh, uh, exploration sector. And it's, it's a really great thing to see. And I think it also plays in a bit in the general view of the um, state government to be a hub for innovation. So, you know, that we're demonstrating that we're open for business um, to international investors for, you know, the mining sector and also technology companies. And it just plays right into that, um, that, you know, they keep coming to South Australia and, you know, we be getting the, the big brains in the data science to tackle our problems. And we have a vision that, you know, we want, we would like to be the go-to place for artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, you know, an application to geoscience data. So, you know, it just keeps that momentum starting with the Osminos challenge and now using, you know, working on government data that um, we just keep pushing that message. And I think it's really important. There's one bit of statistics that I thought was, was really nice um, as part of the Gola challenge. Um, the survey embarked on quite a big um, legacy data capture and if I just look at the stats there, the addition of drill holes, lithology blocks, and geochemistry samples alone, uh, just making them available and the sheer amount of them uh, is worth a total of over $350 million as sort of back of envelope calculation. But that 
that just demonstrates the um, the immense value of just making the data available um, for data science challenges. Um, and I think that that's a fantastic outcome. And you know, lastly, the the challenge itself, um, you know, has enabled us or you know made the decision easy for the state government to put in another five million dollars. Um, for a continuation program, which we're going to embark on pretty much as of now for the next three years. And again, that's just, um, you know, renewed interest and just kind of keeping the momentum, um, you know, to really grow the business and mineral exploration sector in South Australia. So it's exciting times. Yeah, it surely is. Um, thanks, Stefan. Um, now, I'd like to open the next question um, to both of you, to the panel. Um, how do you think the challenge has supported the growth of this expert community? And what does that mean for the industry more generally? Um, Holly, maybe you could um, go first. Sure, totally. And, and this is something that I think is I'm super passionate about and is one of the, you know, the, the real positive benefits from open innovation. So when you do a challenge like this um, that enables people from all around the world to kind of collaborate on a key issue, it really does stimulate an acceleration of understanding in a particular domain and growth of that expert community. So I think, you know, I did actually try to go and uh, Google trends and, and get some data about this, but I think we have enough. But I, I really do think that just in the conversation in general across industry from the Explorer Challenge and then through to Explore SA, just seeing this huge explosion of conversation around data science and mineral exploration. And it's really important that we do that in an open domain because it's really difficult. Um, you know, this isn't an easy problem to solve. Um, you know, we know that we're not uh, great at finding deposits. Uh, you know, we have a, a low success rate, less than 1%. And applying analytics to all of the data that we have is a very challenging uh, thing to do. Um, so by having these open challenges are actually enabling people to collaborate openly and share their learnings um, is an incredibly powerful way of accelerating that. So I think that these initiatives, um, you know, probably we underestimate the value that they do contribute to the industry at large in terms of just accelerating that understanding and getting that conversation going and allow and giving people a platform to learn around a particular thing. So because the challenge is giving them an actual, you know, particular thing to focus on, it's an ability to build your skill set, apply that, try different things uh, and, and share those outcomes and learnings with everybody. So I think it's had a, a huge impact and I'm uh, without stealing, you know, your thunder are talking about phase two. I think that uh, as you said, Stefan, just enabling that continuation of that community is, is so powerful. And I think what you guys are doing with phase two and engaging lots of the people that are in that community, it's really, really fantastic because it's bringing these people along on that journey of, of how do we improve the industry together and make that data more accessible and, and understand challenges from the aspects of all the different people that are trying to use the data as well. Um, so I think yeah, there's uh, lo lots of lots of positive takeaways there, and I think that um, you know the continuation of these kind of types of opportunities will continue to help that that expert community grow and support the the, the sector generally. Thanks, Holly. Um, Stefan, is there anything you'd like to to add to Holly's comments? Uh, I think that I mean what Holly said is, is perfect. Uh, I might just add once one tiny thing, and that is. Just for the industry more generally, if, if you look in, into the past and, you know, we started doing geology, doing maps, and then ArcGIS came along in the 90s. And, you know, especially South Australia was always trying to lead the innovation, um, you know, be one of the first movers in that space. And again, this is one of those perhaps critical moments where we now have such a wealth of data um, that we need to look at new ways of well, utilizing the data. I'm not saying that, you know, data science will answer all the questions, but hopefully what it will do is it will help us um, pose the right questions or better questions than what we did in the past, just because we can look at the data together. So I think that that is the potential here for industry over the next few years and the transformation that hopefully will go through to lead to better outcomes, which is, you know, find the next big oil deposit. Yeah, so it just really sounds like keeping that conversation going is, is a real benefit, yeah. 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 Um, so for the next question, continuing from the success of the challenge, so it's sort of we've just sort of touched on that just then, the Geological Survey of South Australia has been allocated $5 million to continue to lead innovation in exploration technology. Stefan, can you provide any insights into what the survey is planning over the next three years? Yeah, um, so that's a really exciting announcement that, you know, we, we get that continuation, but it's also a challenge of, you know, how do we go about as a survey 
to put in the framework that, um, you know, we, we create an environment such that data science can really thrive and there's sort of an organic growth. So what we're kind of thinking about at the moment, and it's still early days, um, and we're still working on the implementation plan, but we think it's a mix of um, the world and tried and tested, you know, data acquisition is obviously really important. Um, we've seen over and over again that new um, uh, pre-competitive data plays a massive role in opening up new areas, which is um, really important. So we will still continue to do that. Um, but we also want to focus on robust data science and we're putting in a framework to achieve that. And thirdly, uh, we also want to concentrate on the insights. So the, the combination of the two of the data science, uh, data science and data acquisition hopefully leads to better insights for our mineral systems within the state. Um, and data acquisition, you to go into a little bit more detail. I mean, it's a combination of uh, some new data, but you know, of what I've explained before, just for the legacy data capture is extremely important and has huge value. So I think we're gonna, going to explore both avenues um, where we really want to concentrate on you know, capturing some, especially drill hole data and making it accessible for data science. So that's really important. Um, in terms of the, the data science aspect itself, what we'd like to move into is a framework that just makes it really easy for data scientists and uh, exploration industry to use our data. I think at the moment we're very reliant on you know individuals that are experts in their specific data set. You know, quite often we get requests. You know, uh, once that data released, and you can you explain it to us. So I think what we would like to do is transform it in a way that it's very easy to interrogate the data set. So it's almost like a democratization of data. You know, anyone can use it. It's very easy to um, to access and to use it. So we, we're kind of looking to build perhaps web, web services where people can access the data, um, but also a combination where we might team up with some of the entrants and some other um, researchers um, around the world to build specific applications that are, you know, developing spatial proxies for us. So, and, and what that means is that, you know, these specific applications are tapping into our data and then you can generate the right um, product. So you have a much richer environment or richer data environment that again is easy to access, um, easy to use, and just provides more pathways um, to get information inside for explorers um, to find the next big deposit. And again, all of that sort of wraps up with the inside. So, you know, again, all this tool, what it's supposed to do is um, enable us to access the data easier and then ask the right questions, um, you know, for our mineral system models. So I think it's really exciting. It's still early days, um, but I think you'll hear a lot more coming out in the future. Um, and we're definitely gonna ramp up the communication uh, around that. So it'd be exciting. Um, Stefan, just to, to add on to that, how do you think success of that framework um, will look for the, um, for the new data science? Yeah, that's a good question though. We've been thinking, about that quite a bit of, you know, what the goal was whatever we use, uh, whatever we built um, needs to be used um, even after the continue, uh, after the um, uh, finalization of that program. So after three years, what we would like is to build a framework that is easy to tap into. So it naturally um, leads to an organic growing and um, environment for data scientists and mineral explorers and for us even within the survey. Um, so it's a, it, that this tool needs to get used um, and we definitely want to attract people to self Australian exploration, exploration challenges. So that's the end goal, really. Um, and then, you know, hopefully it will ultimately lead to discovery of new mineral deposits. Um, this is kind of fast that that is what success looks like. Yep. Thanks, Stefan. I'm sure everyone's going to be really excited to see how this program is going to unfold and, and still put South Australia on the on the map um, in um, data science. So to wrap up today's um, panel session, can you both in a, just a couple of minutes describe how you see data science supporting the exploration community, community into the future? Holly, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure, thanks. Um, so I guess um, trying to focus on, on, on side of this, like kind of um, this earlier stage of you know, going through legacy data, I think is a good way to focus on this question rather than you know, some of the later stage resource development pieces, but um, which will have a big impact too. But I think, you know, in some ways, I think you guys have um, pretty much nailed it with your vision of what, and what you're trying to do in terms of making that data so accessible for people. Because if you, if you speak to a lot of the data scientists that 
took part in the challenge or, or any data scientist doing this work in our industry, they would estimate that they spend, you know, 90 to 99% of their time prepping the data. We have a lot of data. I mean, you guys know how much like, there's a crazy <laughs> amount of data out there, right? But it's all about enabling people to use it and gaining those insights, sorry. <clears throat> so I think that really is the future of data science is, is that data pipeline, those tools and applications that allow people to just use that data really quickly and gain insights from that as quickly as they can. So I think as a government organization is so well positioned to be able to really make that difference. And I'm so excited to see that this commitment's been made because I think but, but you're bringing together so many different data sets that an individual explorer just can't make the difference that that you guys can do in this space so I do think that is the future of data science as boring, boring as it may sound it's the, the, the tools and the applications to get that data available to people to use as soon as they can to get those key insights yeah um, uh -huh. yeah great great points um, you know again <laughs> I don't have very much to add but it's just supporting what um, Holly just said, it, it's really just about elevating the quality of the conversation. Um, so, you know, again, that you don't talk about, uh, you know, the data itself that should be almost just within this web service or it should be within the framework that you just um, look at the data very easily. So you can then have conversations around what are the better questions to ask in order to find the next auto deposit. Uh, so you're not working on, on just a raw data level but it's already in a format where you can elevate your conversation that is thinking more about the insights of the problem. And I think that is for the entire exploration community, that, that is the, um, the opportunity, I think, for data science. It's not, it's not that data science will automatically answer all of the questions. It's just you know, helping us to um, elevate the, the quality of the conversation. So, yeah. Yep, great. I think we're, we're going to be very busy for the next few years, but I think everyone is really, really looking forward to it. So, yeah. so thanks Holly and Stefan for your time today and your insights as well. Um, if anyone would like any further information, as Holly said before, you can visit the Unearthed or the Mineral Resources website, or you can download any of those submissions from the challenge um, from SARI that's all available for you. Thanks for listening in and I'm sure you're all enjoying the Online Discovery Day program and I hope um, we all get to see you actually in person next year so we can update you on this in this innovation space. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, Holly. Thanks, thanks, Holly. Thanks, Christy. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you. Thanks, Christy.